Diffusion happens if you take a glass of water and you drop a drop of ink into it. At first you see the ink as a drop in the water and over time it spreads out all the way through the water. Diffusion being the driving process and the driving process being the change in concentration gradient. It's starting out as a concentrated drop of, of ink and as it, as it spreads out that energy is reduced, is, is falling. Okay? Now, so left to themselves, molecules will move from a high concentration to a low concentration. Okay? That's what diffusion is all about. So one of the ways in which things can move across a membrane is by the process of, di uh, of, of diffusion, and it's also called facilitated diffusion. What's the difference? Well, the difference is this. Facilitated diffusion means that there's something that's helping it to move across, but it's not providing any energy. I'll repeat that. So facilitated diffusion means that it's simply diffusion. However, there is something helping it move across the membrane without providing energy. What does that mean? OK, let's imagine that this is glucose on the left and glucose on the right. If I let this sit here, OK, over time, and I give this a few hundred years, over time, this, these two concentrations are going to equalize, meaning that diffusion will happen. It's very, very slow, and that's just simply a reflection of the fact that it's a pretty good barrier. It's not a perfect barrier, but it's a pretty good barrier to keep that from moving across. But over time, that diffusion would happen, and I would see equal concentrations of glucose on the two sides. No, no facilitation. That's just simply diffusion across the membrane. Very, very slow process. If I facilitate that diffusion, I can have in here, there's a thing called a glucose transport protein that has a chamber that will only allow glucose into it. So we can think of it as a hole in the dam. So if we have a hole in the dam, what happens when we put a hole in the dam? Well, water comes flowing out of it, right? In this case, the hole we have in the dam is specific for glucose. There's the facilitation. Now, there's a hole that says, glucose, if you come in here, we will let you through. What will happen is these two concentrations will equalize very quickly because something is allowing glucose to move through. Nothing is grabbing it up, picking it up, and putting it over there. Glucose is just simply diffusing from one side to the other, like a little hole in the wall. Make sense? You're frowning. OK. <laughs> Maybe you just don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, sir? So it's called a glucose transporter. We'll, we'll talk more about those later. But, but if you, you, for this purpose, you can think of it as a little hole in the wall that only allows glucose through. Yes, sir? Does that mean the transporter does the what? For facilitated diffusion, that's a very good point. You're, you're right. For facilitated diffusion, OK, this transport protein is not providing any energy whatsoever, just simply providing a passageway. Is the what now? So uh, if you're talking about moving in the, in the membrane itself, that's just simply the process of diffusion itself. So the proteins will move in the membrane by diffusion. So they're not using energy to tra traverse the membrane. But that's, don't get confused with that. I'm talking now about the protein providing the, the entry of the glucose. And it's just simply a hole that only allows glucose in. You can think of it as a security guard, password. Glucose has the password. It gets to go through. Fructose tries to go through. It doesn't make it through. Other questions? OK. So that's facilitated diffusion. Now, the facilitated diffusion is different from uh, what I call active transport. So facilitated diffusion, blah, 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 there's the hole. We see this uh, glucose transport, for example, occurring in blood cells. Uh, blood cells get glucose pretty readily because the liquid portion of our blood um, is actually fairly rich in glucose. And all they have to do is just sit here and just wait for glucose to come into them. Okay. Now, there's other types of transport that are not so simple, and they're called active transport. All right? Active transport. Let me go back to my figure here. So imagine now I've got my two different uh, things. This could be, let's say, inside the, the cell, and this is outside the cell. Okay? So left is inside the cell, right is outside the cell. Now, imagine that these are glucoses, and the cell is hungry. Well, it's got some glucoses in it, but in addition to being hungry, it's greedy. 
it sees these glucoses out here and it wants them as well because it knows that it's going to be having a big party later, right? So it wants to get more glucoses inside. Well, there's a problem. The problem is the concentration of glucose is already higher inside the cell than it is outside the cell, and this cell is wanting to get even more in. Is diffusion going to work? No, diffusion will not do it. So if I'm going to get these glucoses in, I have to have what's called an active transport. So active transport happens, and this is a definition that you should know, active transport happens when at least one molecule is moved against a concentration gradient of a membrane. Active transport occurs when at least one molecule is moved against a tr concentration gradient of a membrane. So it's moving from a low concentration to a high concentration. Now we'll see many transport systems move more than one molecule. That's why it says at least one molecule is being moved against a concentration gradient. Okay. Now, to do that requires energy. Sometimes that energy is in the form of ATP, but not all times. Sometimes ATP is an energy source, and you've already seen one example where that's the case. Oops, I'm almost out of time. All right. Uh, and that, I'll just finish up with that, is the sodium-potassium pump. We talked about the sodium-potassium pump. We talked about covalently modified proteins. And you saw that getting a phosphate from ATP caused it to pump sodium out and potassium in. That's what's happening here. OK. I didn't realize I was running over, so I apologize for that. I'll start with that tomorrow. And I will see you guys tomorrow. I hope to have the exams back as quickly as we can. They will definitely not be back tomorrow, I'm pretty sure.